Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Screw Anxiety Challenge. I have some of you watching on YouTube. If you do want to join the challenge on YouTube, if you haven't already, you must register. So there'll be a link down below. You can do it afterwards. Um, but in order to win the prizes that I'm going to talk about, you must register before you do it. If you are in the Happy Me Project Facebook group, which those of you on YouTube are more than welcome to join afterwards as well. You don't have to do anything. You're in the group, you're in the competition, the challenge, whatever we're going to call it. And if you're not bothered about the challenge, you just want to learn what we're talking about. Hi, Emily, and hi, Mr. Marmelo on YouTube as well. Um, if you just want to learn and talk about anxiety, that's fine as well. I like to add the challenge in because, well, it's nice, isn't it? It's nice to win prizes. I think it's always nice. And it also gives us a motivation to stretch ourselves. For those of you who are on YouTube and have no idea who I am, or for some of you who have come into the Happy Me Project recently and you've come because of this uh, challenge that we're doing, my name is Holly Matthews. I am a self-development coach, a very straight talking, keep it simple kind of coach. I don't like the fancy when it comes to self-development. I say my job is to help people feel more happy and less crappy and what a lovely job to have. I'm a TEDx speaker, I'm a former TV actress and I'm a widowed mom of two girls. And I mentioned that I'm a widowed mom because I think sometimes it's important to get perspective when somebody's talking and to understand that I'm not talking to you guys from a place of life being easy all of the time because it hasn't been, it isn't, we're in the same boat, I'm in the trenches with you, I get it, okay? And I certainly get anxiety. Hi on Facebook. I can't see anybody's everybody's names on Facebook. So if I am not directly referencing you, it's because you need to let StreamYard know if you want to that um, that I allow them to see so I can see you, that kind of thing. Anupa, good morning. Geeky Trainer, good morning. And those guys that are saying good morning on Facebook, good morning to you. I can't see everybody's names. So first of all, before we get started and we delve into what we're talking about today, I just want to ask how you guys are. Let me know in the comments, from a one to a 10, are you a one? A one is like feeling rubbish. 10 is a feeling credible and everywhere in between. Let me know in the comments how you are. I feel a good, I think I'm a nine today. I feel really good. The sun is shining. For those of you that were, have been with me a while, you will know I've been waiting on my garden office being made. It has been made. Hooray! Um, so that was nice yesterday. And to wake up this morning and see that. Good morning, Imogen. I can see you. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, everybody. Erica, good morning. Um, hi, Kaylee. Good morning. I can see that you've mentioned that as well. And I have anybody else that I've missed. So a new person, a nine for sure. Excited for the future and new beginnings. What a lovely feeling. Emily is probably a seven. And the important thing as well, guys, when we do this is for those that are new and have never done it. And I can see somebody on YouTube who is at a one today. So I'm glad that you're here because hopefully we can move you from that. Good morning, Hannah. And six today for somebody on Facebook. Hobbies at work this week. Some big decisions have been made, but no money. So feeling a bit bit rubbish okay here yeah and geeky trainer is around a four right now one of the things to look at is where you are you have been at so working out what your average is because then you can go okay well a four might be average for some people a four might be really low for some people a four might be high for others right so i can't always tell where you're at unless i've seen you guys before which many of you i have and then I can see, but it's also for yourself to be able to check in with yourself. So Erica is an eight today, hovering above the average of a six, thanks to a bit of self-care and investment in myself. I love this, that's amazing. And we can see somebody else on Facebook is a nine today so far, starting off a chilled morning and then off for a walk later once some deliveries have arrived. That sounds lovely. And we've got an 8.5 and six as well. So we've got a bit of a mixed bag. Today we are talking, um, oh, and Hannah's just saying nine today, but I'm going through big change. So anxiety is popping in. Well, I'm glad that you're here, Hannah, because it's our topic of today. It's our three day challenge. So I'm going to explain how this is going to work. So we have three days together. I'll go live at 930 for the next couple of days. And um, the way it will go. So prizes wise, if each day I'm going to set you a challenge, just a mini challenge, nothing so serious or massive. It may still challenge you though, just because it's not a massive thing that you have to do. That doesn't mean emotionally it won't challenge you because I hope it does. That's kind of the point, right? But then, um, oh, someone's saying, how do I let StreamYard know so you can see me? Um, I'm not sure, I think it's on your screen somewhere. It might be under this live. 
I'm not sure. Somebody else may be able to tell you. But don't worry. Just let me know who you are every time. Just do a little name or something like that. Bit annoying, but hey ho. Um, I don't want to. Don't want you to spend too much time worrying about it or anything like that. So prizes wise, there will be five prizes. Okay, there'll be five prizes for you to potentially win. Oh, Mr. Marmello's just saying on YouTube, you're a 3.5 for the reason above. Oh, because was it because of Prince Philip dying? You said, I think you said at the very beginning, you didn't, you felt sad about that. And everybody grieves in different ways, don't they? And for different people, of course. Um, so we have five prizes to give away. So the way to get the prizes is to get involved in the challenge. And the challenge will be posting certain things, sharing certain things. And if you do three days, you are automatic. You have to let me know, tag me and stuff so I can see. If you do that, then you will be entered into the uh, chat, into the, into win a prize. That's what I mean. So the prizes are, I will be giving away um, a version of my, the a version of that does not make sense. A copy of, would that be it? I am giving away the Happy Me Project One, which is my online, my my babe, my firstborn online course, the Happy Me Project One, which is 21 days of self-development. You can do it in your own time. I'm not involved in that as such. So I don't hold your hand through it, but you can just crack on with that. So that's the first prize. The second prize, uh, two of these, hang on, how many? I wrote this down yesterday. I should have probably wrote it down in a better way. So two of my um, meditations. So I have day and night meditations. There's 12 of those. They're guided meditations. They're for you to listen to. You also get some um, mindful coloring. It's a bit sweary, the coloring. So it's not for everybody. But you know, if you're in my group, you probably don't mind the swearing. So meditations, day and night meditations. One of my necklaces. So I have one of these. In fact, sod it. Let's go two. Two of these necklaces are going to be for grabs. These are my diamond necklaces that I created with mantra jewelry. And they come with a mantra. And the mantra says, diamonds are made under pressure. And I know that some diamonds in this group. Diamonds are made under pressure. People who have gone through some stuff and have come out the other side and you will, you with the right mindset can create an amazing version of yourself because of the tough stuff that you've been through. So there'll be two of these and one of my resilience webinar. So it's a whole webinar, whole video essentially on resilience. So that will be also up for grabs as well. I think that is everything. And all you have to do to um, get involved and that is to join in with the challenges and I will pick at random. Thank you guys for the lovely compliments around the necklaces. I have two necklaces. So this one, and there's also one that's a bar and it just says unbreakable on it. Love both of the necklaces and um, <laughs> Imogen's like, yay, want to win something. I love a competition as well. Regardless, you will, you will win because you implement some of the stuff we're going to talk about, but it would be nice to win a little prize as well, wouldn't it? So get involved. Okay, so before we get started properly talking about everything, I just wanted to just kind of put a caveat into what we're saying. So as we are talking about anxiety, anytime we talk about anxiety or we talk about mental health or our minds in general, it is always going to be a slightly contentious subject for some. I am always going to, when I talk about these topics, potentially trigger, challenge, prod a little bit or piss you off. That can happen, right? Because when we are experiencing this stuff, it's really, really difficult for us. And so for somebody to talk about it, if I don't say something in a way that suits your story and your version of it, it might be challenging for you. You might not like it. And that's okay. What I'm asking from you guys is for you to stay with an open mind when it comes to talking about anxiety, come in with a student mindset, with a, I'm going to learn something from this. And I know that by the end of this, you will have taken something from this, even if it is that you disagree with me. And that's okay. I'm okay with that. Like, I'm always okay with me sharing some ideas with you, some ideas that are very, you know, very much based on research, all my own experiences. I like to mix in anecdotal with the science. And you can choose the things that you feel work for you. But it's always about trying stuff, you know. Sometimes it's very easy when we are going through something to just put a blocker and go, that won't work for me. That doesn't work for me without actually trying something and just seeing how we get on with it. So I just want you to come in with an open mind. And I also want you to understand and really know from my heart that when I'm talking about this stuff, it is never, ever to minimize what you are experiencing. 
Okay, so I will often talk about personal responsibility. Never think, never interpret that as blame. Never interpret that as somebody who doesn't get it. I get it. Anxiety is crap. Feeling anxious is rubbish. Panic attacks, awful. And I have experience and do experience all of these. Okay, so even when you know all the stuff, you still have to navigate your way through life, which has its ups and downs and its challenges. So I just want you to understand, I'm fairly sure most of you who are part of my community and have been for some time already get that. But for those of you that are brand new, I'm a very direct person. I sometimes swear. I'll try not to because it's early, but I cannot promise that I won't. Have I already swore? I think I might have. <laughs> I might have. I don't know. Um, but I'm very direct. And so without knowing but it's coming from a place of love, okay? It's come from a place of love and a place of discovery and us just giving this stuff a go. So that being said, let's talk about anxiety. So anxiety is a feeling, just like everything else, okay? And that's just saying, love a holly love punch. That's all it is. It's a love punch, just a little love punch straight in the throat, but it's all with love. Um, anxiety is a is a feeling, just like anger, just like happiness, just like elation, just like all of the things that we experience. And anxiety is an important feeling. So although when it runs amok, we don't really want it, anxiety is very, very important for us. If we didn't have anxiety, if we could just eradicate the feeling of anxiety from our lives, imagine what would actually happen. If we didn't have, if we never felt anxious about anything, well, we'd be late for everything. You know, we would we would just run on our own timetable. We would probably step out into the road now and then because we wouldn't feel anxious about that. We would um, get into cars with scary looking strangers. I, probably, I don't know what we'd be doing. We would put our fingers in a crocodile's mouth, possibly. I don't know what we would do, but we wouldn't do sensible stuff anxiety has a place anxiety will be the thing that makes you work harder anxiety and i mentioned this last time but i saw i saw that i did it last night anxiety made me write notes for this challenge last time we did the challenge thankfully this time i had the notes so i knew what i was talking about and i could just add to it some new bits that i've been thinking about but anxiety actually has a really important thing and in helping us and motivating us. Cars with strangers. And if, I don't know why, why would we be doing that? But we might. We might think, son it, wild times, cars with strangers. Kaylee says, I felt anxious yesterday, heading into our local town yesterday to the non-essential shops. But in the end, it wasn't as bad as the anxiety allowed me to think. And we'll talk about that because that's a very important point, Kaylee. The reason we're doing this the reason we're talking about anxiety now is exactly that. In the UK particularly, we've just gone back out into the world a little bit more. And I know that for many of you, that has created some anxiety. And you know what? Let's talk, you know, I mean, let's be real here. It's been over a year now of some really anxiety-inducing experiences. For many of you, this is like the height of what you've experienced, really difficult, challenging, not for everybody, of course, but this is a has been a really challenging year and a bit, and it's it's going to continue for, for a while, you know, and I think that there are people that have never experienced anxiety at these levels that have during these times. So if that is you, you are not alone in this. It is not weird. It is a normal response to uncertainty in the most obvious form. Imogen says, I'm feeling anxious about meeting friends and family for the first time in months. Of course. And you know, Imogen, that's just so normal. If people were saying to me, um, I don't feel at all any anxiety, I, would, I wouldn't think they were weird, but I would think it was much more unusual than people feeling anxious. Um, someone's just saying on Facebook, I ran my first workshop last Thursday, was anxious, it wouldn't be good enough. Feedback has been overwhelming. Incredible, that is so, so good. And I imagine that if you hadn't had a level of anxiety, you wouldn't have done the work. You wouldn't have cared. We have anxiety for a reason. And that's in a really, really amazing thing. Oh, is that Hannah? I can't say who it is that's saying that. So I'm guessing that's Hannah. That's incredible, Hannah. And I'm someone just saying, I think the more you do something, the easier it will hopefully become, for sure. The more we go out into the world, if we're talking about that kind of stuff, we will definitely see that, um, that lesson. So there is no secret sauce. 
when it comes to switching off anxiety. I would love to say that there was. I would love to say that you've joined this challenge and I'm just going to give you this, this special button that you press on your head and it just turns off the anxiety. Wouldn't that be lovely? If we could switch our emotions like that, then when people say to you, cheer up, it might never happen. A smile when you're feeling rubbish. You could just and you'd be happy. And instead, you want to punch them straight in their mouth. So that doesn't really work. And I can't give you an, any kind of secret sauce. Guys, I can see you commenting as well. And I will probably just leave off the comments for a few moments, but I'll go back to them. Otherwise, I am going to, my brain is going to go everywhere. For those of you that don't know me, my brain is a little all over at times. So I have to stay focused on what I'm talking about. Otherwise, we will be talking about something completely different in a short while. I'm going to try and stick with what we're talking about today, which is anxiety. And Katie's just saying, we need a Holly button. That would be awesome just to switch on. Then you can just hear my voice in your head go, get it together, guys. Come on, love punch. That'd be good. Can I have that as well, though? Because I would like to hear my own voice somewhere. Actually, that's, uh, that is what I have around my house, just notes from myself to remind myself to, to, do, to listen to my own advice. That is important. Okay, so we don't have a secret source, but... But what am I going to talk about? I don't know. Where am I up to in my little thing? Let me just check my notes where I'm talking about. Every now and then, anxiety gets wild. We've talked about that. There's no secret sauce. But, and I think somebody just mentioned this, actually. I've forgotten who it was. Going, as we're talking about anxiety, going back out into the world or, or any kind of anxiety, the one thing that is going to stop us from walking through the anxiety is something that we call toxic avoidance. So toxic avoidance is where we just avoid doing things because we feel anxious, okay? So we don't go to the shops because we just feel anxious. We just don't go. Or we don't make that phone call at work because what if we say something stupid? We don't go for that job interview because we'll probably go red and be embarrassed and sweat and, and we just won't get it. It'll be, what if we fail? We just don't do things. We don't ask that person out because they might say no. We don't show up on a live stream for our business because what if people judge, right? That is called toxic avoidance. In the short term, toxic avoidance feels all right, doesn't it? You know, <laughs> someone on there is just saying, I can't see who it is on Facebook. Oh, I'm full of a bit of toxic. Oh, love a bit of toxic avoidance. I think we all love a little dabble of the toxic avoidance now and then, don't we? Toxic avoidance in the short term feels like a right easy fix, doesn't it? There's an easy plaster for anxiety. Don't do it. But long term, that doesn't help us. Long term, if we just avoid things, we just never end up doing things. We just don't do the things that we want to do. And when we get into a habit of toxic avoidance, and we, I feel like we've almost been forced into that avoidance over the last year because we haven't had to do some of the things that were important for us as people. And especially if you went into this pandemic already a fairly anxious person, for some of you, it's kind of nice not having to face some of the stuff, which is a weird backwards feeling, but it's kind of true for some people, right? And now going back, we can't avoid. We have to move forwards, okay? We have to learn to move forwards. We have to learn to feel the fear and do it anyway. In fact, on my little on my little board here, I'd write notes for my children to try and indoctrinate them with, you know, important information. On here, feel fear is what you feel but brave is what you do. I think that's a really important thing because one, anxiety isn't who you are. It's not who you are. It's just something that happens, okay? And it happens to all of us. Some of you have anxiety that goes a little wild sometimes and it's feeling too much, but we all experience anxiety and it isn't who we are, okay? It isn't. It's just a thing. It's just a feeling. It's just an emotion, okay? So we have to learn to accept that we can still do the thing and we might feel anxious. We might feel anxious when we do it, but we can still do the thing, okay? I'm gonna try and look back at some of your comments in a short while, guys, as well. So let's say, and this is a lovely little tech, lovely little trick. I'm all about the what we call the linguistics, your words, right? Words have a very, very important, to, um, important what's the word? They have important... Um, they play an important part 
in you in the language plays an important part in the stories that we create in our heads okay so when when it comes to language is a lovely little trick when it comes to this when it comes to feeling this anxiety so let's say we say i want to go to dinner but i'm worried i want to go to dinner with my friends i want to go out and i want to go and sit in a garden pub garden restaurant garden somewhere and uh, but so i want to go to dinner but I'm worried that I'll have a panic attack and I'll look stupid. Has anybody experienced that particular thing or something similar to that? I want to go out to dinner, but I'm, but I'm worried I'm going to have a panic attack and look stupid. That could absolutely be many of us, right? Now, when we say the word but, what does that mean? But means we don't have to do it. But I can't go because I can't. It's our excuse. It's our reason not to do the thing. But I will. It's a permission, isn't it? A permission not to go to dinner because we're worried we might have a panic attack. The but is keeping us stuck. So how about we change the but to an and? So it goes like this: I want to go to dinner. And I want. Sorry, I want to go to dinner with a friend. And. I might have a panic attack and look stupid. And I'm worried I might have a panic attack and look stupid, sorry. So I am I want to go to dinner with a friend and I'm worried that I might have a panic attack and look stupid. So those things then aren't mutually exclusive. We, we don't have to be in a space of, well, I can't go to dinner because of the panic feeling. Now it's, I, I'm going to dinner and I may also worry about panic feeling. Now the panic attack or that anxiety might not really materialize. You might meet up with a friend, you might feel actually quite relaxed, it might be a nice setting. You might not feel anywhere near the anxiety you anticipated in your head ahead of time. So that and is really, really powerful. So try it today. If you can hear yourself saying things like, you know, I'd love to do that, but I'm just gonna feel too anxious to do it. I think somebody mentioned an example, actually. Let me just check. I think it was about driving. So Mr. Marmello on YouTube said, I'm self-employed, so email is my biggest stress and driving. Okay, so let's say you say, um, I can't get that business. I, I can't get, I would get, I would love to send that email and get that business, but I'm too anxious about it. Now you can say, I'd love to send that email and I might feel anxious. And then not, they don't have to be set aside from each other because we're going to work through those feelings of anxiety so we can still do the things. We cannot for any long period of time get past anxiety by just avoiding doing stuff because then we shrink our worlds. We shrink our worlds into something really, really small. I'm just looking at some of the comments if I can very quickly. And Mr. Marmelo says, I like chamomile tea when I'm down. Sounds lovely. Um, and before lockdown, you never really experienced anxiety. Rom on YouTube didn't really experience it. And it, I, I think that's very, very common. There's a lot of people that were comfortable with all of the distractions of life and getting on just fine and, you know, normal stuff, normal levels of anxiety. And then during this time, it's really pushed them to a different space. So I'm glad that you're here and able to talk about this. So that's the first thing. I want you to think about that sentence. Change your buts to ands, okay? Just so you can not give yourself permission not to do things. Then I want you to learn to be the investigator when it comes to the anxiety that you are feeling. Question the anxious thoughts. Give them a question, right? When it comes to our mental health in general, we should be the detective. When it comes to how we experience the world, we should always be looking and thinking, that's interesting how I respond to that. That's interesting that I feel quite triggered by that. I feel really anxious around that. That makes me really angry. That makes me laugh. Like we should be interested in what happens for us in introspective. So be the investigator. If we, let's give an example here. Let's say we're going to the supermarket and we, we start thinking, um, okay, if I go to the supermarket today, it's gonna be full of people. I will probably have a panic attack and I will probably die of the panic attack. That's sometimes where our brains go, isn't it? It kind of gets this irrational over the top. I'm, I'm probably going to pass out in front of everybody and then I will look ridiculous and I'll probably die of embarrassment. This is the kind of levels we sometimes go to, okay? So then I want you to ask some questions of yourself, okay? You're gonna be the detective. You know, if anybody's been watching Line of Duty, you're the detective and you are gonna ask the questions of yourself. So the thought's gonna come up, the anxious thought. 
I'm worried about not getting this on in on time. I'm worried about speaking to new people. I'm worried about going to a pub garden. This makes me feel really anxious. So then you're going to ask yourself, is the worry that I have, is the worry, the outcome of the worry, is it realistic? So if I go to the supermarket and I do have a panic attack, let's say, let's say that's my worst thing that I'm worried about. I worry I'm going to have a panic attack and look stupid. Is but uh, but then I worry X, you know, it gets even worse. I'm gonna have a panic attack, I'm probably gonna die of the panic attack. Is that a realistic fear? Well, no, it's not, it's not realistic. Is it realistic? I'll have a panic attack. Maybe I could have a panic attack, it's not a definite. I run with my daughters, and we'll often play a, a, a game that we call definitely maybe when people are feeling anxious. So definitely maybe helps us think about things ahead of time. If I go to the supermarket, will I have a panic attack? Maybe. Not definitely. If I go to the supermarket, will there be food on the aisles? Fairly definitely. Will there be a parking space? Maybe. Hopefully. But we just work it out that way. Actually, it's a very good thing to do, actually, to alleviate some anxieties for yourself. So you can give yourself some certainties, even if you know there's going to be some uncertainties there. So is the worry realistic? Is it likely to happen? Is it likely? Is it likely that this thing will happen? Because often when we really question it, is it likely to, is it really likely that I'm going to do this? Is this really likely? Possibly not. A lot of the time. Could I handle it if it did? Now, I'm a big believer in that we are very, very resilient people. So could you handle it if it did? I think you could. I think if you went to the supermarket and you had a panic attack, I guarantee that what would happen is if it was a noticeable panic attack, people would come and help. If it wasn't, you would feel it and it wouldn't be very nice because they're not. But then you would move forward from it. And I think you could handle it, even if it wasn't a nice experience. So that's a good thing to know about ourselves, isn't it? We could handle it. We can handle really big stuff. I didn't imagine that I would be able to handle my husband dying of brain cancer. If somebody had told me that beforehand, I'd have thought, hell no, no chance. How do you get up from that? How do you get back up? No way. But I did. And I'm not special. I'm not. We're just res more resilient than we realize. What might I do if it did happen? So if I did have a panic attack in the supermarket, what might I do? So we can think about that ahead of time. Okay, well, Perhaps I might focus on my breathing and try and calm that the the, the panic down. Perhaps I might um, sit, you know, sit, take a seat. Perhaps I might just go and sit in the car for a moment till I had calmed down. Perhaps I'd go for a walk. Perhaps I could ask for help. Perhaps I could call a friend who a trusted friend. Trying to think about what we could do ahead of time can alleviate some of the worries around things. There's nothing wrong with planning, okay? What might, and again, what might I do to prepare? I think that's an important thing. What might I do to prepare? Because knowing we have a plan of some kind of get out, that's okay. You know, knowing, even if it is, if you are, I'm using panic attacks as the, probably the most extreme forms of our anxiety. I know that's not what everybody's experiencing. Sometimes it's just an internal constantness of anxiety. And it's not necessarily in the manifestation of the physical stuff. I get that. But what could you do? to give yourself space, you know, even if it is often when people come to my events in person, and they are people who experience panic attacks, they'll want to know, I just want to know how I could leave and go outside that would make me feel a little bit better. If I knew I could leave, then I don't feel penned in and I don't feel that. So you could prepare things like that beforehand. And Anupa's just saying, and how have you handled that? Amazing. Thank you, Anupa. And Hannah's just saying, exactly. Sometimes you look back and Hannah has experienced the same thing as me in terms of losing a husband. And sometimes you look back and it makes you realize how resilient you are. Sometimes if you look at it from an outside looking in, you think, oh God, like, I don't know how, how I've done that. And it's weird, isn't it, to look back on them. Okay, so just learn to observe the thoughts that you're having. And notice them like waves because they do come and go, our thoughts, and start to notice what it is that sets off these anxiety thoughts. Because there'll be things that do, you know, everybody, I'm sure, and you can post it in there if you want to, but I'm sure many of you um, have different types of anxiety. My biggest form of anxiety comes from timings. So, and I think I've shared this with you guys before, but timings are a really big anxiety of mine. I am constantly leaving myself notes and things in my phone and alarms and whiteboards. And 
I don't know where this comes from. I think it's probably that I do have a certain lack of focus and so time can go away for me. I can hyper-focus and I can get very into things. And also I think coming from an acting background where you can't turn up late on a TV set, that doesn't work. Like you can't turn up late for an audition. I think that level is in me, it's very ingrained. So I know that's a trigger for myself. So I alleviate that, not by avoiding doing anything, but I just make sure that I have alarms and notes and things and I, I plan ahead of time and that alleviates that anxiety for me largely, but it will still be triggered. So understanding that about yourself is really important because then you can help yourself and be kind enough to yourself to walk yourself through it, okay? When the panic comes, I want you to spend some time and we can do this now actually because I know that some of you will actually be experiencing this even as we are talking. I want you to focus on the right now. Anxiety is often about worrying about the next thing, about the future, about what if, what if, what if this happens, what might happen? <gasps> it's that feeling, okay? And anxiety is there for a purpose, as we've said. Anxiety is ingrained in us. When we were cavemen and women, we needed to feel this level of anxiety because what if somebody was going to come and take our food or kill us or a bear was going to come, right? We had to be ready for that all the time. We don't need that heightened level of anxiety now, but sometimes it's still switched on a little bit too high for us. The way we we, we kind of curb it is by bringing ourselves into this moment. And sometimes I will genuinely in my own life, when I can feel myself feeling anxious, I will just clap my hands to bring myself into now, to snap myself into this moment. So in this moment, and let's do this together right now, okay? Let's release some tension from ourselves. So we're gonna do a little, just a little exercise. And I know that Kaylee's in here and Kaylee likes this because we, we've done this before. What I want you to do is I want you to shake off some of the tension. I've explained this reason for this before. I mean, just shake it off, all right? You can get up if you're in your room or something and you can shake it off, Taylor Swift, shake it off, shake it off, oh, oh. Um, the reason for doing this, the shake off is in the wild, when a predator is chasing its prey and the prey is um, full of anxiety and adrenaline, like we are when we're scared to go to the supermarket, we're all panicked and full of adrenaline, right? If we don't get caught by the prey, which really in reality, nothing's gonna happen in the supermarket. If we're there, then, um, and the same for the animal, when the animal doesn't get caught by the prey, they get a moment where they catch their breath. This might be the moment for us after a panic feeling, and the animal in the wild, that uh, the prey will often oh, shake it off. Oh, you see a dog do it. You see a, I don't know, we're trying to think of an animal now. Now I can't think of any animals in the world. You guys insert your own animals. Anyway, they would shake it off after they've been chased. So we can do that as well. And it absolutely really does help. Oh, just shaking it off, okay? Shake it off. You can wiggle down below, whatever. Do the hokey hokey. Just shake it off. There's also a nice tense and release we can do. So when you're feeling anxious, I imagine that there'll be some tension in places. So in order to alleviate that tension, let's go shoulders because they're the old favorite for tension, shoulders and jaw. So um, let's go shoulders first. So we're gonna lift your shoulders up to your ears as tight as you can. If this is safe for you to do so, obviously if you have any kind of um, health stuff where you can't do this, then don't. But you know, I think you've got autonomy and like sensible heads, you can do that yourself. So squeeze them up for a few seconds, squeeze, 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 and then drop, <sighs> just drop it out. And you can just add in that little sigh as you drop it. And you can do this a few times and you will notice your shoulders drop more than they were before. Um, maybe it's your hands, maybe you feel tension in your wrists or hands so you can squeeze your fists really tight, squeeze them, squeeze them, squeeze them, squeeze them, squeeze them, squeeze them as tight as you can, and then release and then just let them flop down. With your jaw, we often hold tension in our jaws and our foreheads. So you might just want to give them a little rub. This one's not very comfortable and it used to be um, used as a, a warm up when you're doing singing and acting, you warm up like this. But put your hands in the side up between your teeth there, the back of your mouth, and just drag it down. Uh -uh. You look dreadful and it doesn't feel very nice. But if anyone's coming in now thinking, what the hell is she doing? Uh, 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 and it just pulls the jaw open a little bit. Give it a rub, rub your forehead. I mean, just done all my makeup, like, but you know, just rub your face, shake it all out like that, and then shake it off again. Okay. 
And then we're just gonna take a nice calm breath in. Okay, breathe in through your nose and you can do out through your mouth if you want to or just out through your nose as well. Nice breath in. And on the out breath, as you sigh out, just think about letting something go. Just let it go, okay? In this present moment, we are here together, okay? And then I want you to name five things that you can see right now. So you can do this when you're feeling this anxiety. Bring yourself into the moment. Name it and just say it, just say it in your head. You can say it out loud if you wish, but you just say it in your head. Cup, phone, microphone, laptop, candles. Just name a few things. Just bring yourself into this moment, into this room, not ahead of time. I want you then to think about four things that you can maybe hear. Can you hear anything? I can hear a clock. I can hear my kids. I can hear my stomach grumbling. I can hear my own voice. And it's surprisingly quiet. Other than that, what can you touch? Name three things that you can touch. I can feel my table. Maybe I can feel my top. And I can feel the different textures of everything. The laptop feels quite soft and warm. Maybe I can feel my drink, which I'm going to have a drink of. And this will take me on to a, a taste. Can you taste anything? Can you smell anything? So I've got coffee here. So I can, it brings my senses alive, okay? So if there's something you can smell, like, and you can actively do this as well because it brings you into this moment. Do you have any perfume? You know, smell your perfume. You know, just bring yourself into this moment. Really awaken the senses. By doing that, you're bringing yourself into this moment, into right now. And right now, you are listening to me on here. So right now, this is what's real, this moment. And the other stuff that we can anticipate and feel anxious about, that's an option. It's not in this moment. So giving ourselves a moment. If you can, place your feet firmly on the ground. It's a grounding exercise. Really feel what that feels like. It's actually very, very lovely for anxiety to take your, if you, again, if you can, it's safe to do so, take your socks and shoes off and go for a walk on the grass or just walk around barefoot to feel the ground beneath you, supporting you, being there for you, knowing that the ground is not going to, you're not going to lose the ground beneath you. And sometimes we feel like that when we're anxious, don't we? We feel like everything's crumbling, that we can't, we need to be grounded. So place your feet onto the floor as well. Emily's just saying my anxiety is when I'm worried about where the future takes me. Absolutely. Societal expectations can be very triggering. I would imagine there's lots of people that, are ex that experience that, Emily. I think that's a very, it's a common anxiety and it's horrible, isn't it? It's a horrible feeling. I want you to say this mantra to yourself when you feel anxious. And you can obviously mix it up and have any mantra you want, anything that works for you. But I'm going to give you one for those of you that have never done that. So a mantra is something we say out loud. It is something we say in the present tense, sometimes called an affirmation. And we say it to bring ourselves into what we want us up into this moment and teach our brain what we want it to do. So I want you to say when you're feeling these level signs of panic, your feet are grounded. You've named your, you've, you've awoken the senses. You've brought yourself into the room. Maybe you snap your fingers, clap your hands. Some people like an elastic band to snap them into the moment. <sighs> Take a breath. And then I want you to say, I am in complete control and exactly where I'm meant to be. Very good for you, this one, Emily. I am in complete control, and I'm exactly where I'm meant to be. You can say that out loud if you are able to do so. It does help if you do that. Maybe you can write that down. I'm in complete control and exactly where I'm meant to be. And I can see Rom on YouTube says, I'm constantly worrying about what others are thinking about me. And that's what causes my anxiety. Judgment's a big one for many people, isn't it? Worrying what other people think. My um, thoughts on that, totally different topic, I guess. But my thoughts are other people's opinions of me. It's none of my business. It's none of your business. It's just a version of you through somebody else's eyes. It doesn't know who you are. Okay. So anxiety Although we feel like it, anxiety is not your enemy. It is kind of the annoying friend that you do need around, but sometimes you could do without. And it's more about managing and befriending and putting your arm around that friend that you do need so you don't get into cars with strangers and poke a bear. 
you know that is um it that's what anxiety is so your challenge if you care to accept it is to befriend the anxiety and i know that i'm so glad you've got lots of notes katie i know that some of you did this exercise last time but do it with fresh eyes fresh ears a fresh mind as to where you are right now in this moment so your challenge is to firstly accept anxiety's presence without identifying as anxiety i hear a lot of people and this might be some a little change for some of you i hear a lot of people say i have anxiety if you repeat i have anxiety to myself what do you think your brain will create for you it will create anxiety. Our brains run on something called confirmation bias. Essentially, we like to be right, okay? We like to be right. Our brains like to be right. We're better the devil. We, we know, we're comfortable with it. So if we repeat, I have anxiety, our brain will get on board with that. So change that I have anxiety to, I'm experiencing some anxiety. It's a feeling. It's not who you are. Do not identify with things you don't want. It's not who you are, it's an experience that you are going through, even if it feels a lot. I know that's gonna be hard, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna be friend. And the way we're gonna be friend is this. Your challenge is that I want you to write a thank you letter to anxiety as if it were a person, a friend, okay? I want you to write an, an, a letter thanking it for being there, but letting it know you don't need it all the time. You don't need it, that you've got this, you know, just sometimes letting our brains know we're prepared. I've got this. You know, before I go and do a live, people might not think that I ever get anxious about doing a live. And I get less anxious than I guess most people would. But I do feel a level of anxiety. But my brain has now been trained that I go, I hear you. I hear. And I have to rub my heart. This looks like it's on the wrong side. Rub your heart as a little comforter. And I say, I, you know, I've got this. I'm sound. I've got this. I know what I'm doing here because we're going to prepare. So you can write your letter to your anxiety and you're just going to say, I thank you for being there. You know, you've helped me with this. You helped me turn up on time. You helped me get that work done. But you know when I don't need you? I don't need you all the time. I don't need you when I'm going to the supermarket because I've got that. I'm just going to go and get some bread and some milk. I don't need you to be there with me that. I'm cool. And you're going to write that down. And what I want you to do is to take a picture of that you don't have to share the words if you don't want to. If you feel open to doing so, I would love to see what, you know, what you're saying. It's always inspiring to other people. But you can blur that. It's just to show me that you've done it. And I want you to post it on a social media platform that you feel comfortable with and tag me in it. So it could be Facebook. It could be Instagram. It could be Twitter. Somewhere where I can see it and tag me in it, okay? So I can see what you've done. And I want you to hashtag screw anxiety. Okay, so I can see what you've done and um, and let me know that you've done that as well, because that will be your first first day one challenge that you are going to do. Imogen loves writing letters. Amazing. I love that. Katie says, I need to go back to last year's and see what I've written. So I don't write the same. No, don't even go back. Go back afterwards. Write it first and see what comes up. It might be interesting if it's changed over the last year. And it is a challenge, guys. That's why we do it. I know this isn't going to be easy for everybody. And over the next few days, I am going to challenge you, okay? That's the point of it. But I want you to do this for yourself. It is not about doing this for me. It is about doing this for yourself to see whether you can just mix some of these habits up to break down some... My stomach is really growing at me. Um, to mix it up a little bit, okay? So when do we have to do this by? Good question, Imogen. So I will be announcing the winner on Sunday. So with this challenge up to so we'll have three days of different challenges obviously i appreciate not everybody's going to be live with me every day it will be on replay on youtube and in the facebook group so you can still get involved so if people have thought oh what well, you know i've missed i might not be able to do tomorrow it's fine you can go back you can see what the challenge was you can watch the video take on board what we're saying and you can still get involved if you are on youtube and you didn't know about this and you want to get involved there's going to be a link below this just make sure that you register for screw anxiety on that link if you're on youtube if you're in the facebook group just get involved okay because i already have you as part of my community and i know that you're there so that is cool now on monday guys for those of you that don't know i'm going to be opening the doors once more to the you got this academy that is my six week coaching program so if you have been with me before 
and you followed my stuff or this is the first time and you really feel like um i'm going to come back to yours mr marmelo in a second your um comment if you feel like you really want to work on your mindset and you like the way i deliver things and this feels like something a good next step for you next week on monday from monday evening we're going to do once a week together for six weeks you got this academy as a self-development program so we will cover everything from limiting beliefs what's holding you back how to deal with things when it gets really really difficult when the shit hits the fan what's your plan and um, emily's involved in the academy i can see some of you that have been coming into the academy over the last few days be on board with it get in, get involved and um i would love to see as many of you as possible in there the link to that is going to be below this as well so you can get involved any questions that you have on the you got this academy please do um just ask away there's no stupid questions as well um i'm just looking at comments um and Ram on YouTube won't be able to be here. No worries at all. Just go back and watch it afterwards and you will see. Um, thank you, Hannah. As Hannah's just said, she wishes she was doing it again. It was an amazing course. It was an amazing group the first time round. So you get once a week with me on a Zoom. You don't have to be live on the Zoom. We have workbooks each week. And by the end of the six weeks together, you will have a plan and ideas all around how you work through all of the stuff that we're going through. And there was never a better time to do this as we go back out into the world, as we start facing reality again, and all of the things that I'm sure you've learned over the last, over the time being in lockdown about yourself, and you think, ah, I just need to, you know, work through this, and I, I want to work through this with somebody else, and be held accountable, because it's a really important part of the course, then get involved, join the academy, the link will be below this as well. Oh, there's a few people that are dyslexic, I can see. Um, I don't know if there's a better way for you guys to do it, if writing is a bit of a challenge for you. First of all, don't i don't know enough about dyslexia at all so if there's a way that that works better for you if you want to do it in an audio form if you want to do it in a video form and you feel confident uh, confident enough to do that that's totally fine and i will totally accept that as part of the competition i don't know what would be better for you guys can um you can uh, let me know whether that, I mean, you guys can obviously write. So maybe it's just something that you just take your time with and you have till Sunday and it's, it doesn't matter what it looks like. You know, this is not a, this is not a um, English exam. I don't care about spellings or, you know, sentence structure or anything like this for you. It's for you to be able to get out this kind of stuff. So whatever format feels good for you is really um, important. And I think um, Mr. Marmela said, even if it doesn't feel true. So that is that in terms of the letter, even if it doesn't feel true. So I want you to get it to a point where it feels true enough. So it might be difficult to befriend the anxiety right now, but it needs to be true enough. So I want you to just really consider, actually, anxiety does help me with certain things, because it does. There's, it's undoubtable and it's undeniable that it will help you with certain things, even if it's running amok right now. That's why you're here. That's why we're working through things. But there are certain aspects of being feeling anxious that actually power us to do things. So it's not all bad. So it's just getting you to consider that. And that doesn't mean that you go, anxiety is amazing because it, it doesn't feel amazing, does it? But it does have a place. So it's just noticing what that place is, thanking it for being there and then allowing yourself to not have, you know, allowing it to feel that it can move move on after that as well. Um, Erica says, Def will recommend it was fab last time and still revisit the content. I love that. That's an important point as well. Erica was one of my OGs on the You Got This Academy. You get the content forever. So even if you can't be on the live session, you have a private members area where you can re-go over the content. And most of the members who did it last year, October, November, they still go over things. In fact, I've actually got somebody who is going to do it, who did it last time, who's going to do it again this time as well. So people do do, do that. It's totally um, totally normal. Kaylee says, I should get this done once I've sorted my girls out and do my workout. Fabulous. And, and someone on Facebook saying, I struggle with putting my feelings in writing. I totally understand that. And just, just be kind to yourself have a go, have a try, see what it comes out. It doesn't, even, you don't have to show me this. You don't have to show anybody this. See what happens when you write some stuff down and just see, you might, again, when we talked about anxiety, we were talking about being the detective of our, of our thoughts and our feelings. And sometimes that is, um, oh, Mr. Marmelo's just said, but also audio is great. Oh, I missed something as well. Sorry. Hang on. Rom's just saying on YouTube, yeah, as long as you can read it, who cares? Exactly. And you're saying audio is great as well. 
audio is great. It's very helpful for many people, isn't it? Um, eating my frog and having a go at my letter already. Love that. And that's it. Yeah. Oh, I think it was Jenna who was saying you were struggling with feeling stuff. Have a little, just have a little go and see, see how you get on. Just see what comes up for you. It's all about that challenge. So the sessions that we do, um, these sessions in Screw will be roughly what we've done now. The sessions on Zoom will be an hour, probably slightly more than that. Usually I talk a little bit too long an hour to an hour and a half. They're going to be scheduled at the moment for 7 p.m. each Monday evening. If we find that the group um, it doesn't work for the group at that time, then we might shift it. But at the moment, we're going to put them evening, Monday. And if you can't be on the live, it's totally cool. You will get the recording. I pretty much put it in straight away. We have a Facebook group that will be linked to it as well. So you get to see who else is doing it. We have some amazing bonus sessions as well. So we have... Um, we have somebody coming in to talk about sleep and meditation. We have somebody coming in to talk about financial well-being, which is going to be ace. We have a yoga session going to happen. We have somebody talking about simple living, decluttering your world, your house to declutter, your mind, and all of that great stuff. So we have some incredible people coming in as well. Let me know any questions you have. Just drop me a message on social media or holly at iamhollymatthews.com. And um, I look forward to seeing many of you get registered and become students of the You Got This Academy. And I will see you all tomorrow for day two of Screw Anxiety. Take care, guys. Peace.